I just can't shake the feeling that the Galaxy S25 launch was really more of a Google event than a Samsung event. There was a ton of Gemini news and these aren't small announcements by any means. We got a handful of new features that should be live right now for both Samsung and Pixel users alike, like the new Gemini overlay, multi-action capabilities, and some meaningful circle to search improvements. Plus, we got a lot of news on some upcoming features that should make Gemini more powerful like Project Astra integration, all of which I'm gonna cover real quick, super simple, super easy for you guys. And if you enjoy our coverage, which hey, I really hope you are, consider subscribing to the 9 to 5 Google YouTube channel because we have a lot more content like this coming your way. Getting right into it, probably the most obvious change that's super easy to spot is the newly updated Gemini overlay that should have gone live for all Android devices last week. The redesigned overlay is much smaller than it was previously and has a more simplified interface that includes a plus menu for accessing the camera and gallery, a text input field, a microphone icon for verbal input alongside the Gemini Live shortcut. Because of this change, we no longer have the split screen multitasking handle and the good morning, afternoon or evening text has been removed as well to clean things up a bit. There are some cool details here worth noting about this redesign. As you speak, the text field grows larger to accommodate the added text and the suggestion chips like the ask about video prompt, for example, are now left aligned instead of centered. Of course, there are some visual animation changes too. There's a more vibrant bluish slash purple glow around the perimeter of the prompt box. And there's a new glowing ring around the microphone, replacing the material use style icon that we had before which should be more noticeable for newer users. Like I said, this feature, from my understanding, is live now on all Android devices and is overall a nice little update that should streamline the user experience. Needless to say, I'm a fan of this change. This next feature is also something all users should be able to take advantage of immediately, which is Gemini's new multi-action capabilities. This one is pretty cool as you can now give Gemini a prompt that requires several steps to complete. For example, you can say, show me a list of nearby Chinese restaurants and send them to X, Y, or Z contact. Or you can say, show me high protein lunch ideas and save them to my notes app. To complete these actions, Gemini connects to a ton of different apps and services using extensions. So if you get a chance, try some multi-action prompts with your most used extensions like YouTube Music, Device Utilities, or Google Maps and see what you come up with. I would also say I'm excited to see how this multi-action capability grows as Gemini's extensions get more diverse. Maybe in the future we can do prompts with third-party apps like Uber or Instacart for example and the way I see it the possibilities are endless and I'm looking forward to see how things go from here. Another announcement we got was the deep research feature being rolled out to Gemini advanced members on mobile. For those who don't know, Deep Research is a new Gemini feature announced in December 2024 that can research websites on your behalf and then create a report based on that info where you're also provided with a list of sources to ensure accuracy. Since launch, it's only been available on the web version, but in the next few days, it should be available on Pixel devices on the mobile app as well. Only, I will say, for Gemini advanced users at this time. Admittedly, I haven't used it as much as I would like to as honestly, Notebook LM I prefer so much more. Personally, I like finding my own trusted sources and bringing them in for analysis versus having the AI find sources for me. But on the other hand, deep research seems to be much easier for the average user, so to each their own. Either way, I'm happy to see it finally being brought over to mobile. We did get some pretty major enhancements to circle the search as well. For one, AI overviews will now appear in your results when you perform a visual search for a place, image, object, and much more. These overviews give you some extra information and context for your search. And honestly, I think this is the best place for these overviews to be by far, as opposed to having them shoehorned into the traditional Google search. Circle to search should be the fastest, most efficient way to get information on something. So I think this is a really good, high quality addition. Furthermore, Circle to Search will now be able to recognize URLs, emails, and phone numbers. When identified, users will have the option to perform various one-tap actions like opening a website, sending an email, or making a phone call as a few examples. Again, nice changes to streamline the experience. And finally, Circle to Search is also getting an updated UI that places everything in a pill-shaped container, probably to make it more in line with the Gemini overlay redesign I mentioned earlier, although it isn't rolled out widely yet, so just be patient on that one. And 
And the last new feature we should have access to right now is Gemini Live's ability to engage in multimodal conversations, meaning it will be able to interact with images, files, and videos. In practice, you can upload an image or file via the plus button in the Gemini overlay where you should see a new quote talk live about this chip. For example, if you're uploading a painting, let's say, Gemini Live can recognize it and give relevant information about the artwork and you can have a back and forth dialogue about it. Or if you have a file you want to upload, Gemini can have an in-depth conversation about its content. When watching YouTube videos, you should also see that talk live about this chip where Gemini can give insights, explanations, and detailed reasoning about the subject at hand. This should have been available starting on January 22nd on the Pixel 9 series, as well as the Galaxy S24 and S25 series, but I have yet to see any reports of this being active on any Pixel 9 devices, so again, we'll just have to be patient. In the meantime, keep your apps updated and hopefully we'll get our hands on it soon. So those are some of the Gemini features that you can take advantage of today, in theory anyways, but at the Samsung event, we also got some news on a handful of upcoming features that are worth mentioning. To my surprise, we actually got more info on Project Astra as it seems to be getting some integration into the Gemini app. Through this integration, the Gemini app will be able to support screen sharing and live video capabilities. All we know is that it will be available in the quote coming months, but when it does become live, you will be able to share your screen to get help navigating through an application or discuss some kind of visual content, let's say. Or with live video streaming, you could get real-time assistance with tasks that involve physical objects objects or ask objects on what's being shown via the camera, much like we saw demoed with the Project Astra ad we saw at Google I.O. last year. Honestly, I wish it was available now because this seems like something I would use the most out of all these new features, but unfortunately, it seems I'll just have to wait a little bit longer. And that, my friends, is all the major Gemini news that came out around this S25 series launch. There was quite a bit, and I wanted to talk about it as a Pixel fan and someone that literally uses Gemini every single day. Again, I'm surprised we saw so many pivotal features announced alongside the S25, which leaves me curious on what else Google has in mind for the rest of the year. We still have the Android 16 launch, a ton of feature drops, and of course, the Pixel 10, most likely in August, where I expect even more Gemini features to be announced. And overall, it seems like this year, Google really might hit their stride, maximizing Gemini for as many people as possible. With that in mind, let me know what you think about how Gemini has changed so far. In my opinion, it's a completely different beast than what we saw at launch almost a year ago at this point. If you have some strong opinions, please, by all means, leave them in the comment section down below. But in the meantime, I'm getting out of here. Before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, and there's no better way to say it, we greatly appreciate you guys as Damien and I work super hard to make the best Android content on the platform. And we love every one of you for supporting us on this journey. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.